Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to show you how to fill up the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Fountainhead to hopefully make things a little bit easier. In this particular video, we're going to focus on non-employer businesses, things like independent contractors or sole proprietors who are applying for the first draw of the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Let's get started. First, you're going to end up on a screen that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you to enter in your email address. Go ahead and enter in your email and click Get Started. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask you to check your inbox. What they're going to do is send a one-time four-digit passcode directly to the email to verify the email itself, and then you'll be able to continue. Once you go ahead and enter in that password, go ahead and press continue. It takes just a couple of seconds, and then you're going to be on a page that looks like, looks like this, where it says, before you start, pick one of the two options. Either you already had a Paycheck Protection Program loan, or you have no Paycheck Protection Program loan. If you are applying for the second round of the Paycheck Protection Program loan, click Already Had a Paycheck Protection Program Loan. In our case, where we are applying for the first draw loan, we're going to click No PPP. And it's going to take us to the screen that says Loan Eligibility. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to click click uh, Check Eligibility to go through the whole steps together. You're going to end up on a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask us a whole bunch of questions. First, was your business in operation on February 15th, 2020? Yes or no? Was your business in operation for all of 2019? Yes or no? Is your business a seasonal employer? Yes or no? Does your business employ people besides the owners? Yes or no? In our particular case, this is going to be a no because, again, we're functioning as a non-employer business. Is your business a destination marketing organization? Yes or no? Is your business publicly traded? Yes or no? After you filled all of these out to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to ask us for eligibility values. First, it's going to say enter the values based on the full time period of your choosing. We click on the drop down and it gives us three different options. We can enter in our tax information for 2019 for the full year, our tax information for 2020 for the full year, or for the last 12 months. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click 2019. After that, it's going to ask us for eligibility uh, values. It says average monthly payroll. In this particular case, this is going to be your total payroll, and this is going to be divided by 12, or the number of months. So, go ahead and grab that number, and then we're going to enter it in together. After you've entered that in, make sure that your number of employees is correct. In our particular case, it's one, because it's just us. After that, it's going to ask you, do you wish to refinance an economic injury disaster loan, idle loan, into this PPP? If you have an idle loan, you can go ahead and click yes here. In our case, we're going to click no. After that, it says your business, including affiliated businesses, must meet one of these conditions. Do we have no more than 500 employees, SBA industry size standard, or SBA alternative size standard? In our case, where it's just the one of us, we're going to click no more than 500 employees and scroll down. After that, based on all of the information we've given them, it's going to calculate the amount of our Paycheck Protection Program loan for us. It makes it really easy. Make sure that this is in fact correct, that it is the number you're entered in above times 2.5, and then press Next. Then it's going to ask for your business information. So it's going to ask for your business legal name, your business phone number, just in case they have any questions, your business address, city, state. You can only enter in the, uh, the state code itself and it has to be capitals, and then your zip code. After you filled out this entire section to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to ask you for your industry NAICS code. If you don't know your NAICS code, that's totally okay. All you have to do is click this bright blue link right here, and it's going to take you to a page where you can find that information. After you've found that information, go ahead and enter it into the form as shown. Enter in your code, make sure that you select it from the drop-down, and then continue. 
After that, it's going to ask, what is your business legal structure? We simply click the drop down and we find the one that's the most eligible for us. In our particular case, we're going to function as an independent contractor for the sake of this demonstration. After that, it's going to ask us for the year of establishment. These are a search and find. So what you're going to do is find the actual month itself, and then you're going to go ahead and find the year, and then find the date. That way it's nice, quick, and simple. After that, it's going to ask for your employer identification number. Please review carefully. In our case, because again, we're an independent contractor, my business doesn't have an EIN. You go ahead and you click this little button right here, and then it's going to ask, is this business a franchise, yes or no? In our particular case, no. After that, we have a little bit more information when it comes to ownership. So it's going to ask for your first name, last name, email address, phone number, job title, and then your date of birth. Again, just like the last one, you're going to go ahead and find that date of birth to the best of your ability because it does just take a couple seconds. After that, it's going to ask for your tax SSN. This is your social security number. Please make sure that you enter this to the very best of your ability. If you do mess up at this point, you could experience a significant delay in processing your application. And as always, any and all information I show you guys directly in these um, types of videos is 100% falsified. That way we can try to make it as clear of an experience as possible and as close to your own when you're filling out these applications. Then it's going to ask you to be able to check this slide bar. This is the amount of ownership that you have in your particular company. Where it's just us, we're an independent contractor, we're going to go up to 100%. Next, it's going to ask us for the owner address. If your business address is the same as your address for where you uh, live, go ahead and click Use Business Address. Otherwise, go ahead and manually enter it in above. After that, it's going to ask for your voluntary self-identification. So it's going to ask for your veteran status, your gender, your race, and your ethnicity. Once you've gone ahead and filled this out to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next. Then it's going to ask us for our government declarations. We're almost there. See, you can see our progress over here on the right-hand side. Now, it's going to ask us for what we're going to use the purpose of the loan for. This is anything and everything you're planning on using these funds towards. That could be payroll costs, utilities, property damage, worker protections, rent and mortgage interest, operations expenditures, supplier costs, and other. In our particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click Payroll Costs, but please click anything and everything that's applicable to you. And then we have a whole bunch of questions we're going to answer. First, is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees included in the payroll calculation for this business? Yes or no? Do any owners of this business own any other business? Yes or no? Does, uh, did this business receive an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, IDLE loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? Yes or no? Is this business a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no? Then click Next. Mandatory Qualifying Questions. Again, are any owners of the business debarred or excluded from this transaction by any federal department or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Yes or no? Has any owner of the business, for this business, or another business they own, taken a loan guaranteed by any federal agency that is currently delinquent or which is defaulted in the last seven years? Yes or no? Is any owner of the business subject to criminal charges or presently incarcerated or on probation or parole? Yes or no? And then make sure that you go ahead and uh, initial right next to that to be able to certify your answer. Has the owner of the business been convicted of a felony involving a financial crime in the last five years or been convicted of a felony and placed on probation or parole within the last year? Yes or no, and just like the one above, we're going to make sure that we put our initials next to it to certify our answer. And click Next. Then we have more things we're going to uh, put our initials next to. Let's run through this together. We're making the following certifications in good faith by initialing next to each one. First, the applicant was in operation on February 15, 2020, 
has not permanently closed and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, or sole proprietorship with no employees or had employees for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes or paid independent contractors as reported on Form 1099 MISC. The current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll, or the payments will be used for things like mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damages, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures. You understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of payroll costs, covered mortgage interest sums, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker pretend, uh, protection expenditures, and not more than 40% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll costs. Initial again. The applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program loan. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. The president, vice president, head of the executive department, or member of congress, or spouse of which person is de as determined under applicable common law, is not directly or indirectly holding a controlling interest in the applicant. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are listed on an exchange registered as the National Securities Exchange. You further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documentation is true and correct in all material respects. That you understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable under the law. And you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using the required documents submitted. You understand, acknowledge, and agree that the lender can share any tax information that you have provided with the SBA's authorized representatives. After you've ensured that you've initial next to each one, after you've gone ahead and clicked next, it's going to ask you to review your information. It's going to show you every single piece of information that we've done together. Your eligibility questions, business information, ownership, and government declarations. Feel free to click into each one by either clicking view or edit to make any adjustments here. After you feel comfortable, go ahead and click next. And then it's going to take you to upload all of your documentation. Now, there's a whole lot of things here, but if you're not sure if it applies to you, you can simply hold your mouse on top of this little I button and then you'll be able to continue. For instance, entity formation documents. In our particular case, as we can see from holding our little mouse over the I, it says it's required unless we're a 1099 independent contractor or sole proprietor. In our case, that's not applicable. Next, it allows for a 2019 form I-10. Uh, Next, it'll ask for a 2019 IRS Form 1040. Let's go ahead and go to the computer. We're going to go to My Documents. There's our 1040. Let's go ahead and press Open. Next, it's going to ask for a bank statement to prove that the business was in operation on February 15, 2020. Let's go ahead and click Upload. I have my whole little thing full of bank statements right here. There's bank statement from February 2020. We'll go ahead and press Open. Next, it'll say driver's license or other real documentation front and back for me. This does either have to be a full color copy or it has to be a picture both front and back. We need to be able to see all of the edges of the license and it cannot be blurry in order for you to be able to continue. If it is, you may experience delays. Go ahead and make sure that that is both front and back. Next, it's going to ask for a canceled check. Now, with this particular thing in mind, go ahead and make, it, make sure it's a canceled, voided check that goes to your business account. That way they can be able to get you the funds when and if you're approved for your loan. It says additional supporting documentation, anything that we believe is going to be necessary for us. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click Upload. I'm going to submit my Form 1099 because we end up filling that out every single year. It says a 2020 invoice, bank statement, or book of record showing the business was in operation of 2015-2020. Uh, Again, we're going to go ahead and click right here where it says upload. We're going to go back to those bank statements, and we're going to upload that a second time. There's my bank statement of February 2020. If the payroll report is not available, copies of W-2s. Again, that's not applicable to us. And then it's going to ask for the email wire info document. What this looks like is if you click this sample right here, 
It's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you for things like the borrower name, your signer information, and then it's going to ask for your account name and address, bank name, bank address, routing number, account number, and company contact name for wire verification. This is the second way that you can upload your information into the system. That way you have the ability to be able to receive the funds as soon as possible. In my case, I have that ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here, go to my documents, there's my form, and we'll press open. After you've uploaded all of the information to the best of your ability and you're ready to go, go ahead and press submit. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine. This is going to be your home dashboard. From now on, when you go to the Fountainhead website and you log in, you're going to be taken to a page that looks just like mine, where it says your app ID, your business name, your Paycheck Protection Program loan amount, the current status, and any action that's necessary. What's going to happen from here is you're going to receive correspondence directly from Fountainhead in case you have any questions, comments, or concerns in order to be able to get your account filled out as quickly as possible. However, if you do want to run into any additional issues, feel free to contact us directly.